Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the second part of texturing a creature using ZBrush Core. In the previous tutorial, we added a bunch of texture to our creature. And in this video, we are going to be covering so much, including muscles, veins, how to make it look like a scorpion, wings, and so much more. If you are new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. Software I cover includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. If that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up your software, and let's finish texturing this weird looking creature that I invented. Let's talk about what if you wanted to develop muscular systems. So right now it's just the neck and things like that. What if I wanted to make the arms look like they're really strong? So what I would suggest is that you go and find reference, right? So for example, let's say um, I want to do a kind of like a gorilla arm. Go to images. Now, the problem with gorilla arms is that they are covered in fur. Now, we know that they're muscular because the fur is literally, you know, showing off their muscles. But what we need is to be able to um, see what these muscles are going to look like. So you can see here that the muscles um, we have really, and I'm sorry, I don't know the names, but we have, I, think, I don't remember the names. I, I studied this a long time ago and I can't remember any of them now. Um, but we have really large muscles here, or they do. We also have large muscles, but not as large as them. And then we can just kind of compare how our muscles uh, fall. So we share similar muscle structure, as you can see, but it changes around here. And of course, their hands. So here's an example of kind of like a drawn. You can kind of get an idea that the muscles are going into one direction. Then you have the muscles in the front and back. And then if you look where the forearms are, you can see that they twist to the front. So these are the type of details you need to capture if you want to accurately make it feel like this. these creatures have muscle and there's something underneath their skin. So even though I don't have very muscles, the way I move and the way my skin folds around my muscles still show a lot about my, my muscle structure. So what I'm going to do is kind of scoot this over to the side. And this is a nice thing about the clay's buildup is that it will naturally start creating the muscle fibers. So I'm going to start off with the shoulders. So I'm going to go in and start kind of painting where the muscles are going to be. So I'm going to start off with the shoulders. And they kind of come from here. So make sure you're taking like big strides and what's fun about this process is that you're starting the muscle but because you're using clay buildup it automatically creates this edge flow and then we have these right so in, in this particular case because my arm is so tiny i'm going to just have little muscles here which end up around here and then muscles over here which actually start more like over here. So again, I'm just kind of looking at my reference and making sure that I get the chunky stuff. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm gonna build this one a little bit more. And then there's a muscle that goes from, kind of like from here to the front. So it's more like this. So again, what I'm doing is looking at my reference and making sure that I'm doing the best that I can to capture this interesting muscular uh, flow. So once you feel like you've got the the muscular flow, you can start smoothing it out. That's when shift comes in. So what's nice is that it 
uh, shift, which is smooth. It's getting rid of my noise, which is not a big deal. I'm going to get that later, but it automatically creates it looking like it's smooth. So the smoother it is, of course, the less muscular is going to look. But if I don't smooth it that much, you can see that the muscles are still there. So it automatically builds the skin around your object. So again, it's really important to kind of capture that build using the clay, the clay buildup. And it's fun because the clay buildup actually automatically gives you direction and muscle. So you can see that my guy just turned really buff. <laughs> Exactly. So you don't want to mess with this guy because I've, uh, you know, I, I purposely wanted to over exaggerate it so you guys could see it. But by creating, by using a reference, B, the clay buildup, just getting that edge flow to actually flow around, you can see that now, now made a very, very muscular looking creature. Now, if I wanted to kind of calm it down, I shouldn't have made so many muscles. But the idea is that just by adding this edge flow, with the uh, the clay buildup, which it's such a powerful tool, we can get some really cool effects. All right, so now that I have that, let me go ahead and just go back to my standard brush, color spray, grab, I'm gonna try 27 and just kinda, oops, it's kinda big. Let me get my scale smaller and just fill it up with that skin texture again. All right, so fairly quickly, I can actually get some really intricate designs. All right, uh, veins. So again, you probably need to look up like veins and I'm not sure if I'm gonna find gorilla veins and who knows what's, I'm not even gonna show you guys because I'm afraid it's gonna be like grotesque. Um, but let me see what, but you can always look up like super muscular guys and they just basically, their veins pop out of their arms <laughs> and, uh, and they're very proud of it. I can use my mind's eyes to kind of think of like, okay, yeah, I can come up with a, with veins. That's not hard. But the reality is, is that I'm never going to be able to get really accurate veins. Right? Now, these are just totally over the, <laughs> over the top and excessive, but it's good for me for reference. So let's say maybe this, this guy, he's got kind of like, I wouldn't say normal veins, but at least it's not as dramatic as the other ones. So um, what I can do is just grab the damp standard. So let me just reset everything here. Dots off. And let's go to the damp standard. And instead of digging in, which by the way, you can use damp standard if you want to get that muscle definition, you can. But you can also draw veins. So you can go in and just kind of, and again, I'm looking at my reference. I'm just kind of going through and he's got ginormous veins going through his biceps. There's a lot of them coming up from the elbow and uh, so on and so forth. You don't have to use a damn standard. You can use other things, but um, that's the one I'm grabbing. So again, I'm just kind of going through here and just kind of, and you may think like, well, I could just draw veins. Like um, you really need to look at reference because no matter what happens, you're never going to get accurate veins. So I remember that I did that once with my character design class. And I was like, I'm just drawing veins. I know what veins look like. My teacher immediately was like, so that's not how veins work. And I was like, oh, so just kind of make sure that you're following the muscle structure, the, the veins follow a particular path because it's trying to give blood to, um, you know, the areas of the, the muscle, things like that. I really overdid it, <laughs> but I'm trying to teach you good stuff. <laughs> So yes, it is over the top, um, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what um, you know what you can do. So let me just get a couple of more veins. So that's how you can get <laughs> really muscular arms for this creature. So this creature is ripped. Don't mess with it. You can go underwater. They're lucky you can't fly anymore. I got rid of the wings. So it's like, you can't just chase after you anymore. It's got a slither to get you. So maybe you can outrun it. All right, let's focus a little bit on the hands here just because um, That'd be kind of fun. So I'm thinking with these is just to have like really simple claws. So I'm actually going to grab the high polish, make it a little bit smaller and just kind of give him, oh, not high polish, sorry. Um, let's go for trim dynamic. And I give him some. So I just created some interesting details here to make it feel like he can kind of grab something maybe if you want to give it nails you can kind of give it 
And again, I'm just using the tools that ZBrush provides for us. Like who can beat this giant slug? I mean, it doesn't have much armor, so you can shoot it probably, but if it's gonna fight it, then that's a different story, I guess. All right, just kind of giving it some, a little bit of a shape on the fingers. There we go. Maybe I could do a better job on this one. So I feel like this could use a little bit of, of a mask. So I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit of a shape here. So I'm gonna give it like almost like scales. Again, this is so all over the place, but I am hoping this is helping you guys. All right, so I'm gonna reverse this. And you don't forget that we have the deformation tools. We can actually go in and just inflate it a little bit. And we also could use the move tool and the move tool again, make sure that it's large enough. And you can kind of push this up. And then if you want to kind of give it more of a scale, you can push it forward. So again, that kind of helps make it feel like it's got scales. Um, I forgot the backside. So let me just kind of get this up a little higher, move this forward. So you can see that just by having the right amount of, you could just, if you use the move tool, you can actually push this forward. So that's going to make it feel like you've got scales. So if you're interested in making scales, that's how you can, uh, like a particular type of scale, you can do that. This could also be used for uh, fingernails. So again, we have chisel brushes, which are more than welcome to um, create your own little design. I wanted to make a little one behind it. Oop. Get rid of symmetry. I don't know if it's going to make sense up here in the head. It's so random. All right, so we have a sea creature with some interesting looking fur, skin, eyes, muscles with veins and scales. So let's do that again, but this time back here. So I'm gonna look at it at the top and I'm gonna hold down this to kind of get a shape. Oops, so let me turn on symmetry. All right, so let's invert it. Again, you can just do a little bit of inflate just to kind of bring it out a little bit. Let's grab the move tool. Move and then grab a big brush whoop, so that you can lift this up and then drag it forward. So again, you can lift this up a little bit and drag it forward. you're interested in creating scales or anything like that, that's basically how you can uh, make it yourself. Okay, that one needs to go higher. All right, so to create a wing, you want to append. So let me go back to here. So the one thing you wanna make sure is that your display property is, is a double, but let's create, let's append something. So we're gonna go over here, uh, click on append, and you're gonna grab a plane. And there it is. And you'll notice that one side we can't see, one side we can. So you wanna make sure that you have that layer selected and that you'd go into double lift, move to the side, scale it up. So first you want to divide this several times. <laughs> I'm gonna delete my lower and let me get rid of my focal shift so it's a little sharper. and draw the shape of the wing. It would be a great way of actually creating wings is to just kind of um, paint your wing. So again, I, I'm just guessing what the wing looks like. I'm not saying this is the best looking wing I've ever made in my life, but it hopefully gets you the idea. All 
And don't forget to use the mass lasso because it can actually give you some pretty nice organic shapes. It's okay, I'm just winging it. <laughs> you guys are so funny. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. Oh my gosh. That was good. All right, let's make this nice and uh, sharp. Not perfect again. <laughs> I'm winging it. <laughs> um, let's go to extract. You can kind of look at it on the side. Click extract. And then if you're happy with that, click accept. So now you have a new subtool and then work from there. So the first thing I would do is like re-Z mesh it because it's probably pretty dense. I would go in and just kind of reduce the topology with Z remesher. So it gives it a second while it remeshes it. There you go. Low, pretty, st pretty low, but still pretty good. And then you can divide the geometry and start uh, sculpting. So that's when you can start using the trim dynamic to kind of help it look a little more smoother or just hold on shift and try to smooth that out as well. So, uh, and that's how you start modeling your wings. For more organic shape, you can use the move tool. So again, the fastest way you can get to a brush, once you start using ZBrush a lot, you're going to start clicking B, M, V will get you the move tool, right? So that's pretty fast. And then you can just kind of go in and Oops, maybe have a fall off here because you want a, sm a smoother transition. All right, let's get this smaller. Actually, I'm going to use, the, should I use a damn standard? Yeah, I'll use a damn standard and just kind of follow. If you guys want to not dig in like this all the time, you can always go up here and change it to add, and then it just becomes easier. All right, let me get my smart stroke here. Let's get the lazy mouse here, increase my lazy radius, which sounds really weird. There we go. So that's a little bit easier to control. Yeah, that's basically the the idea on how to create this wild looking creature. But we went over a lot. We went over the uh, the shaping we're using the chisels. We used the clay buildup to give us muscle structure and then soften it up. We used the damp standard to create veins. But you guys don't have to do that. You can use the standard and just paint it. Use masking and move with inflation to get us these scales. And we also did the standard to just kind of with the color spray. And oops, I have, oops, I meant to click on the standard. So again, standard, um, we can use the color spray with alphas to kind of give us a little bit of noise. And of course the damn standard is great for um, creating details. And we use the high polish to create weird looking nails um, and so on and so forth. So hopefully all the tools that you guys have learned from the past are gonna help you create your interesting creature. All right, and that is how you detail a creature using all sorts of tools using ZBrush Core. Pretty amazing. If you liked this video, please click that like button and share. That would be amazing. If you think someone out there needs a little tutorial on creating creatures, please share my videos. Don't forget to hit subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this content and that you want to see more. And please check out academicphoenixplus.com. That is my website dedicated to you. There you can download 3D models, tutorials, and so much more. And while you're there, take a look at my e-courses. These e-courses are a deep dive into Maya when it comes to modeling, UV mapping, texturing, and even lighting. So check it out. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time with me. Keep creating, and I will see you next time.